this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents, here to read some of God's Word, followed by Pat's Two Cents, followed by God's Word. At least that's the way he gave it to me. So we'll see if the plan plays out. Starting at verse 1, this is Proverbs chapter 3. My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding and in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. He yeah, has a plus and negative side to that. Yeah. It's wise to obey you guys. Now listen, Pat's two cents. These are the two stories the Lord laid on my heart to tell you. Now that ended in verse 8. Okay, these are the, are the stories, the two stories. One was me and a friend of mine, or shall I say in correct English, a friend of mine and I were at a store. We were sitting in the parking lot, parking lot puffing on our cigarettes. Now this is back in the day when girlfriend was totally not walking with the Lord and her feet were swift to mischief oh yeah and we were sitting in the car jamming off to music and uh, she lived in a predominantly white neighborhood and I was the only speck of brown anywhere in there so when we would go to the store we would it was her neighborhood store and we would go in it was like a game to us we had money but we wanted to get away with, you know, taking a little something, something that didn't belong to us to see how much of the something, something we could get. And that was something funny to laugh at when we got back to her house and pull out all the spoils to see what we got away with. Well, the reason we got away with it so easily was because I was with her and they knew her face because she was part of the neighborhood and she frequented that market. So, one night, we got all these, these two big giant bags. I mean, they were almost like suitcases. And I had planned on getting a porterhouse steak. I had done it before when I was eating a lot of meat. And she was going to get a bunch of, I, I really forgot what she was going to get. But anyway, we were going to get meats and, and seafood and candy and chips. And I mean, we were going to just load up. Tee hee hee. Yeah. So basically, uh, we were sitting in the car, puffing off the cigarettes, jamming off the music. And then she said, okay, I'm done. I'm going to get inside. Are you coming? I said, oh, yeah, I'll be there in a minute. Let me finish my cigarette. So she goes in. I had half a cigarette or so to go. And I'm jamming off of this song that I like. And then all of a sudden, I get this troubled feeling. Let me tell you this, you guys. God communicates with the dingbats that don't even walk with him. When he has his hand on your life and he's got a destiny lined up for you, even if you're too nitwitty to know it, God is still working on your behalf to ensure your ability to get on the right path in time. So here I am on the wrong path and I'm playing games and I'm jamming off the music, puff, 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 puff. And, uh, all of a sudden, I get this troubled feeling. Now, the song is pretty much over, so I turn the radio off, and I'm listening, 
and you know I don't remember a lot of things in detail like this but this was one of those those uh, aha moments or whatever you want to call it um, I'm sitting there and all of a sudden the Lord starts playing this scenario in my mind I mean listen I was at the point I wasn't even sure I believed in God but he, communi he communicated with me anyway and this whole communication starts coming down in my head as they would call it downloading and I'm hearing this one-way conversation and this is what it said it was a warning to me you're going to go into the store very matter of fact very calm you're going to go into the store you're going to pick up everything you want to pick up and when your pocketbook is full you're going to buy something and head out the door when you cross the threshold they're going to call the security guard he's going to detain you while the manager calls the police I was given a blow by blow you guys while you're waiting for the police they're going to come and you will be arrested and when they take you down to fingerprint you you will do time Oh, let me tell you how that thing scared me. It was so crystal clear. I'll never forget those words. You will do time. I had never been arrested in my life. I wasn't a bad person. I was mischievous. In some ways I was bad. We won't go into that. So what ended up happening was I put out my cigarette. I... Uh, I took the key out, the, out of the ignition, walked into the store. I looked for my friend, and she was in there doing her thing. And I walked up to her, and I said, uh, let me tell you what just happened. I just heard something in the car. So you can finish what you're finishing, and then I'll just wait. But I'll tell you what it said. And I told her and you will do time she listened to that she looked at me she said well i'm not gonna be a fool if that was for you it was probably for me too let me put this stuff back we'll just go buy a few things and go on and leave i'm not gonna steal anything and i said okay so i went to the car and waited for her she finished what she was doing she came out she got in the car, we drove to her house and tried to decide what else we were going to do for the night because that game was over for good. Mm. As a result, you guys, because I listened to a voice that belonged to a God I did not know at all, but I had enough respect to take heed. I never did time. God's mercy. When you listen, it's a benefit. When you don't, it's a booty whooping. So here we go. Story number two. One of my customers sat in my chair and told me a story. I'm going to tell you the story because some of you old or young need to hear this there's a principle in it and it can mean it, it could be a matter of life and death for some of you now before I go there I want to say this how many and, and I'm not faulting the, the, the kids but how many times has a child been told, don't cross the street. If your ball goes over there, leave it. Come and tell me I'll get it. And they go across anyway. And bam, a car hits them and they're crippled for the rest of their life. How many times 
is a child told to stay in the house, don't go anywhere, and they sneak over to their friend's house, and one of the friend's adult relatives rapes them. How many times do people have horrible uh, um, uh, experiences or great damage done to their body or absolutely die because they did not listen to the voice of wisdom and instruction? Well, this lady told me about this family. It was a father raising his three kids. He had two boys and a little girl, a little baby sister, about four or five years old. Now, this story is very important, so listen. Here they lived near a riverbank, probably a half a mile to a mile away from the riverbank. And they had a big piece of land. So the kids could play, run, and romp, and jump, and ride their bikes all over their property without having to go anywhere else to do so. And Papa Sita had to go to the market. So he told the kids, he said, now listen, he's instructing the bigger brother while the other kids listen on. You guys do what your big brother says. I want all of you to stay right here on the property, in the yard. Do not go in the driveway. Do not go down the road to the riverbank. Stay here. I won't be long. Okay. So the, the little girl heard it. The baby brother heard it. And big brother heard it. Plain as day. No question about what Pop meant. Soon as Papa Sita drives down the driveway and he's out of sight, big brother decides, hmm, I know how to swim. I don't know what he's worried about. And he gets his little trunks and puts them on and he eggs his brother to come with him go swimming at the riverbank. Baby sister, sometimes it pays to pay to pay attention to a baby. Wisdom. Baby sister says, But daddy said we shouldn't get a get that that you shut up and you better not tell, because if you tell, I will never talk to you again. So now little baby sister's scared because she wants her big, her big brother to love her. Yeah. So baby brother is all into what big brother wants to do because that's his hero. So they go trotting down to the riverbank. Well, of course, baby sister's trotting behind him. Big brother jumps into the river and he is swimming. I mean, he's a masterful swimmer. But the current... It gets strong. And all of a sudden, he's like, oh my goodness, I, I, I don't have control. And it starts to suck him under, and he's like, help, help. And next thing you know, this he, you see the arms flailing, and then boom, silence. Nothing but the sound of the river rushing. And you can't see him anywhere. Well, baby brother knows how to swim too. So he's going to jump in and save his big brother. And he jumps in, and the girl starts to crying. And the girl can't swim. She's got to stay on shore. So they get in, and he gets in to rescue his baby brother. Well, of course, if the current is too strong for big brother, baby brother is definitely at a loss. And they both drown. They die. I paused for the cause. Baby girl is, is frantic. She doesn't know what to do. She can't tell her daddy because big brother said, if you do, I'll never talk to you again. She doesn't get the fact that he ain't never going to talk to her ever again. So she's all tied up in knots trying to contain this thing. She's running home in panic. Here comes Pops, pulling up the driveway. And he's looking at her, and she looks like she's been crying, but she's, she's trying to be cool, and she's antsy, and she's acting weird, and he knows something's up. He's like, you know, what's wrong? Come over here. Come on, baby girl, what's wrong? Tell, you know, tell Daddy what's up. <laughs> Come on, tell me what's up. <laughs> and then it all comes out. Boy, Pops jumps in that truck. And makes a beeline to the riverbed. He can't find his sons anywhere. 
He's looking. He trots across. He's looking. He's got rope and everything. He's trying to find, to see any kind of sign of their shoes, their pants. Hopefully they're on the side or whatever. Could not find them. He looks way down and sees something. And he, he drives in his truck so he can get there as quickly as possible, hoping he could revive them. He finds one son, and he finds the other. Too late? Way too late. Of course, he did everything he could. But the window of opportunity to revive a human being from the lack of oxygen was over, well overdue. So now he's staring at his, I mean, it's, uh, can you imagine the pain of this father? He wasn't trying to stop them from having fun, you guys. He didn't want them to get hurt. That's what that was all about. But they died because they wanted to play. They leaned to their own understanding. Okay, so I tell that story, both of those stories, for a particular reason. I believe God is warning somebody, one of you or many of you out there, old, medium, or young, who are bent on doing things your way. You've been given instruction. You've been uh, shown wisdom. All kind of teaching has been poured into you, but you don't want to hear it. Talk to the hand. You want to do it your way because you are nobody's fool. You have brains between your two ears and you know what you're doing. Really? Well, I believe this is a warning for you that what you do may cost you or someone close to you, their life. If you don't stop heading in the direction that you're determined to head down, be very careful in through here. Put the brakes on and do an about face while you have time. This is your warning. You do not want to cause your parents, your guardian, your family, your friends, whoever, or your husband or wife, or mother or father to have to plan your funeral. It's not just about you. Whatever you choose to do will affect everybody else in your life. But it's still your choice because that's the gift of freedom God gave us. Freedom of choice. What you do with it will determine the consequence that follows. Now, I'm going to read another story just came to me, so I'm going to share while I'm, I'm going to the other story. I know a guy. He was a friend of me and my ex-husband years ago. We, were at a, we all went to the same church together. This man decided he was going to tell us why he ended up in a wheelchair. This man was young. He was barely 30, barely, late 20s. Handsome, beautiful personality. Could not move his legs. Could not move his hips. Could not move his arms. He barely had a few fingers he could move. His neck could barely move. And all he had was a few fingers, his mouth, his eyes, and his face. That was it, you guys. Everything else he had to do, his bodily functions, everything, he had to depend on someone else. Now, he was out getting ready to go swimming with a bunch of his friends. And they weren't quite ready to go. But he was done. He didn't feel like getting back in the water. Pay attention to that gut, I'm telling you guys. And as a result, 
he sat there and got good and dry. So he decided that he didn't want to be a bump on a log. Oh, I'd be the bump, baby. I wouldn't even worry about what they thought. But he decided to go against his gut and get back in the water and get wet all over again. This time, it cost him. It cost him dearly. He wasn't committing a sin. It wasn't about sinning or or even trying to be disobedient as far as he, he was just following his feeling. But his mind told him, okay, well, my friends are getting in. Let me not be a bump on the log. His heart was telling him, you're done with the water for the day. Just stay dry. See, sometimes God will manipulate our emotions and make us not want to do something. But when you go against those feelings, when you go against the desire in your heart, sometimes inadvertently you're disobeying the voice of God. That's why had he taken a minute to say, Lord, should I get in the water now or should I stay dry? He might have gotten a cut and dry answer, but he did not ask. He made a choice without acknowledging God. He leaned to his own understanding. So, as a result, his young life was spent in a wheelchair, totally dependent on other people to take care of him, feed him the whole nine yards. Now, the trip is... What he did what is what he shouldn't have done. Maybe had he just gone swimming, he might have been all right. But he decided to get up on those rocks at the beach and jump off and dive. Bam! He hit his head. That was the end of it. His friends had to come to his rescue, and his life, as he knew it, was all over. Think on that. Just think about it. Now we're going to go back to God's word. All right. Now this is Hebrew chapter 3. I'm telling you, God is trying to warn somebody out there. It's either somebody you're hanging with that likes to do stuff that God wants you to stop. And if you stop in time, you'll be like me and escape doing time. But if you don't, you're going to have to pay the piper. All right. Starting at verse 7, Hebrew, three chapters, th Hebrew chapter 3, verse 7. Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost saith, today if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works forty years. Wherefore, I was grieved with that generation and said, they do err in their heart. They have not known my ways. So I swear in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. Take heed, brethren, lest there be any of you, be any be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. Mm -hmm. So, whatever you do, even if it's something as simple as, should I go back? Should I do this again? Should I go with them? Ask God. I'm telling you, you will save yourself so much heartache. Your life is going to have trouble. That goes with being here in the land of the living because the land of the living is a dark land full of sin, full of evil, and we have to navigate through all of that. But we have God as our guide, our help, our protection, our wisdom, our understanding. Oh, we have God. You don't have to battle this thing alone. But if you make choices outside of acknowledging him, you are stepping out of the ark of safety like the two boys did that drowned in the riverbed. Hear his voice. Harden not your heart. Take heed. 
please. Even if you're getting bored, don't get weary in well-doing. Please, listen, ask, consult with God before you make some of the simplest decisions. There are times that I just want to go to the store. And I said, well, Lord, you know, I, I need this, I need that. It can wait, but, you know, can I go? You know, I mean, should I go? Because I know car accidents can happen a block away from your house. I know that. So I just ask. And sometimes everything in me says, oh, I don't feel like going on. No, and I don't go. Now, I'm not saying I'm perfect in obedience because I'm not. I've escaped a lot of pit holes by God's mercy, not because I was obedient. But the more we obey, you guys, the safer we are. Okay? Now, I'm done. And I hope that you hear and take heed to the warning. Whatever it is you're walking into, stop. Do an about face, go the opposite direction. Ask God what you should do before you make these major decisions. Even if it's marriage, if it's going on a trip, I mean, it could be harmful, harmless things, but they can still do harm. Like with the two boys who just wanted to play, but they stepped out of safety when they disobeyed. How many lives have been cut short because someone was not told what they should do? I mean, someone was not doing what they were told they should do. Okay. I don't want to beat a dead horse. I am done. God bless you. Be safe.